Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me for a day that I have been quite looking forward to. The kind folks at Lamborghini have just delivered a Hurricane STO here to the Shmi Museum. And today I'm going to take this car out for my first drive to experience a future Shmi mobile. Now my spec is locked. The car will go into production in about three months or so, delivery soon thereafter. But today I'm getting my first opportunity to get behind the wheel of this spectacular example example in the grey with the yellow accents. We'll go through the car in detail, take a full look around it here at the Schmuseum before we jump on board to go out for a drive to see what it's all about to experience for my first time the Lamborghini Huracan STO. Look at this, the Lamborghini Huracan STO is here at the Schmuseum. It's actually just been delivered. And I tell you what, it's quite surprising how loud this car is. I thought it would be significantly quieter, but it's really quite a cool sound from the V10. We're gonna be hearing plenty of that when I can get it out in a few minutes for my first drive to see what the future Schmuseum is going to be like. Now parked here with some of the other cars in the garage, it looks the part, it fits right in and we don't have too long to wait. But I want to show you a few things about this, a bit of a test drive, if you will, taking it out to see what the experience experiences about and how some of the various parts of the car work that might surprise you. But most of the STOs that I've seen up to this point have been in the launch color scheme, that blue and orange, the blue Lafay with the Rancho California. This in the gray with the yellow wouldn't necessarily have been my choice, but I think it looks stunning. We've got the yellow contrast pack, the lower accents. We've got the yellow sticker packs and the door logo pack as well. But the STO is very much based on the Super Trofeo race car. The name itself, Super Trofeo Homologato, homologated Super Trofeo, and as such, it brings with it an enormous rear wing, these very aggressive aero blades over the arches, the NACA cooling ducts, a manually removable engine bay cover, the Cofango at the front, this full carbon fiber clamshell that wraps all the way around the front. You don't have a separate part for the bumper, the bonnet and the wings. It's all one piece that folds forwards with a storage compartment that could just about fit a helmet. This is a track focused beast. In fact, it is based on the Hurricane Evo rear wheel drive. So the updated car that is rear wheel drive as opposed to the more traditional four wheel drive as was seen in the previous generation with the Performante, for example. But this is very much focused for purpose, sounds for purpose and a very, very cool thing. Let me show you a little bit on the inside and what we've got here. We've got the new sports seats finished in the Nero with the yellow trim on them as well. We've got things like the carbon floor, I'll show you all through that, the updated infotainment, the vertical screen in the center. We've got the different driving modes, STO, Trofeo and Pioggia, the latter being when you're driving in the wet, which hopefully we're not gonna have today. We'll have to see what the conditions are like outside. But back here is your 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10. In this case, 640 horsepower, the same output as the Performante and the regular Evo and Evo rear wheel drive models, along with 565 newton meters of torque, but it saves some weight. 43 kilos lighter than the Performante, 1,339 kilos dry weight, being rear wheel drive, slightly slower off the line, but capable of some very quick acceleration times and a very high top speed but i think it's going to be about the emotion today so i should probably take a step inside to get this started and like i said prepare to be fairly impressed by the sound of this thing one press to wake up the ignition We've got the STO logo on the dashboard. We're in the regular STO mode at the moment. I love this with the colors of the Italian flag. One press here and we go into Trofeo mode, which is effectively your track mode. And then let's start this up. How good is that? I thought it would lose some of that bite, some of that bark, but listen to a few little blips. <laughs> just silly it shouldn't be allowed to sound like that and that's just a gentle idle blip obviously under some load out on the roads it's going to be a different thing entirely it feels cool i'm looking forward to doing some miles in these seats to see what these are like as well exactly the same that i've ordered i'll compare the spec of this more to the spec of what i've gone for as well a little bit later on but let's take it out 
and go have a first drive experience then in the Lamborghini Huracan STO. A quick fun thing to show you about this car. As I mentioned, you've got the manual engine bay cover. You have to press the two latches, one on each side to open it. But before that, you need to unlock them. There's a specific tool for the purpose. It's exactly the same for the Kofango at the front. Again, one lock on each side before you press it. But if you need to find that key for the STO, it's stored down here in the driver's footwell. You pull on the red tab, and then you have the key piece with the STO logo on it as well. That simply goes in here, unlock it, and you can open it up. And then we can pop that back. I'll show more of that a little bit later and what the storage areas are like on this car. Press that back in. Right, let's head on out. second drive in the Hurricane STO because we have fast forwarded into the evening. So about five minutes after I set out earlier on, the heavens opened and we have had a day of torrential rain, which was far from ideal for a car like this. Now this particular example is fitted with the street tires as opposed to the race tires, but there was a lot of standing water. It was very sketchy and a lot of people were driving 30 odd miles per hour in a 60. So it was no fun to experience a track based supercar. Now I did have these visions of grandeur when ordering the STO a short while back that I'd be taking my first drive on a beautiful day over in Italy on a racetrack in dry conditions and getting to properly experience what it's all about. But alas, with the current travel restrictions, that's not possible. We're here in the UK on some drying tarmac, but still slightly greasy around. Now you probably notice instantly driving along like this in the STO mode, which is noticeably sportier than in the regular Hurricane Evo rear wheel drive in its standard mode, but the car is very calm and docile. Of course, the valves are closed on the exhaust, the steering is light. It's all happy to just be going about business as usual, to cruise along a little bit. It starts to come to life though, if you go into manual, if you get it out of the automatic gearbox and start to go down through some of the gears, higher in the rev range, and get some of this noise, and what a noise. It shifts like lightning fast speeds. It's still comfortable, of course, because we've not gone up into Trofeo. Now, to talk a little bit about how this stacks up to the Hurricane Evo rear wheel drive, because ultimately this takes that car and develops it further, you can tell that it's stiffer. You can tell that it's sharper. The speed at which it revs up the V10 is just glorious. The steering is also slightly heavier. You have a familiar, I suppose, sensation with the valves. The car makes a tremendous sound. It's surprisingly loud. I'm not quite sure with current regulations and homologation how that's possible, but that's not for me to worry about. All I need to know is that when you do do this, it's a delight. And that's what I think you often want, the emotion of a car. Now I would love it to be slightly more connected. The steering is still that little bit artificial, doesn't quite give you the right feedback, I would say. It's, I, I don't know, it's not you know the hydraulic type steering that you might find in a McLaren, or even the way that Ferrari have their steering set up. But then, they don't do that these days. Naturally aspirated engines are going to be a thing of the past. This is going to be potentially one of the last, maybe they'll make another facelift or something, but one of the last cars of this era, of this generation, and it puts a massive smile on your face and it moves down the road incredibly quickly. No two ways of looking at that. And then when you do get to say a village and you need to slow down, you can pop it into Pioggia, into wet mode. The steering changes feel completely, to be honest. We could go back into automatic on the gearbox, but I think you actually have to stay in manual in Pioggia. You can only use automatic in the STO mode, but this is effectively I suppose the mode whereby you should restrict what you're doing. We're talking a fairly lightweight car with a lot of power to the back and a car that probably wouldn't be afraid to snap and bite you a little bit. Now I particularly like how the dashboard changes between the different modes and how it feels to sit inside here to be honest. You've got a great view, fantastic view of the blades over the arches and the end plates of the wing as well. The seats I need to talk about. 
the new sports seat design. I had hoped that they would be a little bit more to my liking. I've never been the biggest fan of Lamborghini seats. Either the buckets from the Performante, also found in the SV and the SVJ, or even the regular seats, which I've always found a little bit too firm. And I have to say, these are still a little bit too firm. They kind of dig into my lower back. So I'm gonna be needing to find some kind of pillow or cushion to help me a little bit with that, because this is not particularly comfortable. As we come out of town though, let's go into Trofeo which puts the ESC into a special mode as well. But we've got some dry tarmac. Little bit bumpy, but it just feels lively. It feels a way you can get some crackles out of it. And it feels decently small and nimble on the road. So many modern supercars, you just lose it a little bit because they're so large. The change in the steering is dramatic though when you go between the different modes and it takes a moment to adjust to it. It takes a moment to take in how you need to interact with the new settings. But this is cool, it's pinpoint sharp down these kind of roads, mid-sized country lanes. We'll get onto some more open roads shortly, but I'm not gonna lie, despite the fact that I'm not on a racetrack in Italy, this is still spectacularly good fun. As I said, you can really throw it down the road. Now you can hear a lot of jingling perhaps from my bag and things that I've got in the car at the moment, and that's because of having the carbon floor, which is something I'm not the biggest fan of because I find that my feet slip around a little bit. My heels move around at the base of the pedals, which is not really what you want. He says just let's try and stop that jingling just for a moment over there, and all of the various nice aluminium style finishes. You can get those in dark chrome as well but it really does glide at quite some pace, very, very effortlessly. And I can imagine out on track, it's just gonna to come to life. The braking as well, obviously CCMR brakes in this, they take a while to warm up, but when they do warm up, they give you an astonishing feel. Open roads, evening sunshine, up to the red line, what a sound. We're gonna miss those noises in the future. I don't know how they've done this. I presume this is the same as how mine will be, and if it is, I'm very, very, very happy about that. Sometimes you just want to shut up and let the car do the talking. out of the shifts from the seven speed dual clutch gearbox are so quick. It's always been one of the things about the Hurricane, that mixture of usability in terms of the ease to drive and in terms of the comfort, daily drive for example, but not so much the practical side, there's not a whole lot of storage in here, but just that smoothness that very few other supercars manage to replicate. paddles which are attached to the column. Normally I'd prefer on the steering wheel, but in this case you've got these lovely long shift paddles which are still very, very easy to locate pretty much wherever you have the wheel. And obviously there's a tighter steering ratio as well. You're not really doing all that much by way of steering inputs. So just slowing down for a moment, just so we can do this. Nuts. Now you don't have the best visibility rearwards because you can't see out of the engine bay hatch at all. The vision is completely obscured by the scoop on the roof, which is actually to cool the air in the engine bay, as opposed to air directly for the intake to cool within, which is not quite the same. Obviously with this power output from the car, plus the fact that it looks very cool, it makes sense, but it's not your traditional roof snorkel that you have up top there. Driving it though, even in Trofeo mode, it rides well. And these are some pretty bumpy roads I'm flowing, throwing it down. These are not, for example, the tarmac you might find at Imola or Monza or any of the other famous circuits over in Italy. And then you do that and drop it all the way down through the gears. It is very weird the way it does that though, opening the valves at 4,500 RPM obviously regulations and doing what they can but I hear there are probably ways to 
mix that up a little bit, should you prefer. So definitely be considering those a little bit. Anyway, let's find a slightly more open flowing road where we can put the foot down a little more. Cruising along on a dual carriageway, and I apologize for the very low evening sunshine. You realize quite how good the car actually is as a cruiser, as a Grand Tourer, as a car to just enjoy leisurely driving. It just so happens to be able to do that as well at one end and then when we're around the roundabout and the wheels are straight at the other end it can also do this <laughs> yeah and it just so happens to look absolutely mad because it's a lamborghini you just have to look in the mirrors and see the reactions of people that you drive past to take in that this is an extraordinarily striking machine there are as I've said though, a couple of things about it that I'm not hugely keen on. One of those is the seats. I really did hope that they would work better for me. I did injure my back significantly in the past and that is part of it, but there are ways around that with cushions and pillows and various things. And the other is the steering. I hope the steering would be a little bit more connected. It feels slightly artificial to me, more so even than the Evo rear wheel drive did, which is odd. I thought that had done a significantly better job of bringing in some of the driving feel that the regular four-wheel drive Hurricanes have always lacked by having the weight up front of the four-wheel drive system. Every time just putting the foot down and experiencing the acceleration of this car is really, really cool. Now I think most of the time pretty much all customers will have it in STO mode because it works so well. It still opens the valves at the same 4,500 RPM and it just rides that little bit better without the steering being quite so heavy. Now I want to hold judgment on that until I've had the opportunity to really push it on dynamically on a racetrack because I think that's where the heavier steering will reap rewards, whether you will offer more engagement with the car and where it will really help with that. But this is a Lambo and part of the reason I wanted it is because it's the most dynamic Lambo. I've always found the weight of the Aventadors to be a massive inconvenience for the cars. While they are very, very quick and they do boast an amazing soundtrack and obviously have very dramatic looks they're not as agile as a car like this they're not as usable and I'm not going to pretend that this is particularly usable given that there's a complete lack of actually any sensible luggage space but it is a car that you can just jump in and think, drive around we've got a front nose lifter we've got enough space inside there's a little bit of a parcel shelf behind where you can just about stick a few things as well should you need to you have to get used to the indicators that are on the steering wheel, either pressing it left or right with your left thumb, and then you press into the button to cancel them, should you wish, and that just takes a little bit of getting your head around. But once you're in the car, you can just drive this, you can just daily drive this. So I'm not surprised that Lamborghini are going to make a lot of them. You can still find allocations for these cars. They're not completely, I think, sold out. Um, they're certainly available and around. It is a car, though, that I think, when driven, hard and aggressively in the right environment is going to be a really, really exciting prospect. And that at the end of the day is what this is for. It's not a car that's built with the primary objective to be driven around town or whatever it might be. If we just go down through the gears. So while I'm driving gently on the throttle there, it does rev up so astonishingly fast. It's when you pop it into neutral. It revs so quickly. The speed with which it goes up towards the red line at 8,500 RPM is really astonishing. And I guess one of the interesting things is that it's significantly down on power when compared to many of the twin turbo generation. For example, the F8 Tributo or the 720S, 765LT, or of course the new hybrid generation, um, even running slightly less power than the McLaren Artura and significantly less than the Ferrari 296 GTB. But it's not, I think, all about power. And obviously the naturally aspirated engine offers you something that those don't manage to replicate. And that's really quite cool as well. Anyway, we do happen to have a very nice tunnel just in front of us. We'll get there in a moment. Another slightly funny Lamborghini thing is that to open the window, you press the button in the opposite direction to what you expect. So in STO, it automatically upshifts. If you go into Trofeo, 
down, getting more of the cracks. Wow, that's savage. That's ferocious. So, Lamborghinis in tunnels, hey? <laughs> just silly, just absolutely silly in a magical way. He's on it. <laughs> speed limits are speed limits. Well, it's been very, very fun to take this car out for a drive and to be able to share it with you. The day the embargo has lifted on driving impressions in the Lamborghini Huracan STO. For the moment though, let's head back to base because I do want to show you a little bit more about the car and some of the spec things. Back at the garage and how cool is it to have the Huracan STO here today, a vision of things to come at the Schmuseum in only a matter of months. But I want to walk a bit more around the specification of this particular car which honestly looks fantastic the very metallic gray paintwork complemented with all of the yellow contrast accents this car has the contrast accent pack which gives you this lip that runs around the front nose the lower section of the side skirt and also if we come towards the very back we've got the end plates and I talked a little about the shape of this look at how it cuts back in underneath and also finally this bumper insert section as well. It also wears all three of the optional sticker liveries that you can order for the STO. So the first of those is these diamonds that you can see here on the rear, also at the top and around the front arches as well. The second is to have the STO logo on the doors. You can have this with the contrast color and then the STO logo in either white or black. And then the third is to add the white details that you can see here down the shark fin over the engine bay cover and also around at the front on the lower front lip you can see down at the bottom it also has the gloss carbon fiber you could order the car with the gloss carbon satin carbon or have it without so you get the splitter you have the insert that runs across the top there the louvre is on the arches and a number of other components the snorkel back here you've got the rear wing and the diffuser and center sections of the bumper as well and looking back here check out how open all of this is these openings here for the airflow out of the arches the cooling that you have for the exhaust and the various sections back inside there. I love this detail with the STO logo that you have across the mesh. And all in all, it's just a crazy, crazy thing in terms of the design. Now let's come around and get everything opened up. I've just been to unlock it all using the key down there in the driver's footwell. But if we press all of the buttons, and it's a bit of a challenge potentially to do this one-handed, and we'll see exactly how this goes. You might need to do it with two people, but I'll learn as I go. Give that a press and then basically carefully lift this forwards and it opens up leaving the outline for the headlights right the way to the front and reveals some of the storage space that you have back here and the wonderful carbon fiber underside of the Cofango. That is one single piece and makes it quite the transformer in the process. Now in the Hurricane up front, you would normally have a pretty small storage area to begin with. In the case of this, when you've got the airflow being managed through there as well, it comes down to just this small little area where we've got a tool bag and first aid kit, and then a storage compartment for a helmet. Now you can actually take that out. If you lift this out, you get a little bit more space, but not a whole lot more. You're not gonna be fitting much more than a single night's worth of stuff in there for a road trip. Not the best car for that at all. It is designed to be driven on the racetrack and not for going on a massive road trip. Similarly to open this, it's very much a two person operation. Let me see what I can do because basically you release both sides. There's a catch over on the right hand side, then you slide it forwards and lift it up. So you have to pop both of these. There's a catch back here and then you would slide it forward. So we can see just a little bit of the engine and what an engine it is with the bronze engine topper. Of course, not many reasons you need to be able to open this up. And you can also have different painted liveries over the top, for example, just give it a click to close it back down. And then of course you would go with the key back around and shut all of these properly. For the moment that will do the job. That's quite fun as well. The way you have the mesh, of course, to stop stones firing out and breaking glass or damaging anything when you're on the road. But to close this back down, reverse the process. There is, by the way, just quickly, an arm there to hold it. Because if you're doing this outside, the wind could blow this closed or something. So you've got the support beam for that. Closing it back down, super, super carefully does it. Very race car-esque. And get this back into place. He says, just like that, click, 
and come round and click the other side into place as well. Nice and easily does it. Is that clicked? There we go. That's clicked into place. And I want to show you as well a little bit more inside here. So there were lots and lots of options in configuring the STO, the different wheel options, for example. This car has the gray, you could have them with silver, with diamond turned, with black. You have the different calipers. We've got the yellow to match with the yellow exterior accents of this. Of course, I mentioned the carbon skin, having the carbon floor, which I find allows your feet to slip around a little bit, which is actually kind of annoying, but the door cards look amazing. Full carbon door cards with the grab pulls to release them and the other nice handles to pull them closed. We've also got the optional carbon fiber air vent surrounds we've got the carbon finish for the central tunnel components as well and the leather styling and i want to show as well a little bit more of the dashboard in here which looks awesome the sto logo in the italian flag colors the press of the start button you can lift the flap if you want the extra drama or just press through the opening in the middle we get the different driving modes so we're an sto if you go into trofeo it goes red if you go into pioggia it goes blue, not too complicated. In fact, you have to press accept every time doing that. Start up in Trofeo just because. It's mental. That's so aggressive. And it revs so fast. That's really silly. So in here, of course, you've got the new interface, your navigation telephone. You've also got the telemetry. So this car has the track telemetry with the cameras that you'll see dotted around. One up here looking forwards, for example. And if I just turn on the light, there's also one right behind in the bulkhead that can obviously film your operation of the car as well. And combine all of that with various delta times and lap information. If you go into vehicle, you also have the LDVI, the Lamborghini Dinamica Veiculo Integrata, in this car, it's the first car to tell you brake temperatures. So with the CCMR brakes, you get the brake temps. You also get your tire pressures and temperatures to go with that as well. So lots of information. And obviously in here, you can do everything that you might expect and hope to find from it. If you do go into reverse, you also get the reversing camera right in front of you. A nice view of the Schmimobiles there as well. And press P when you're ready to shut the car back off. Nice and easy. Obviously, we've got lots of tech. We've got the carbon finish here across the dash. You can have the cup holder if you want a different finish here. You can also get a, uh, an assistance, a travel pack to have a net to store some things. And there's a small amount of space on the shelf behind the seats. You can just about fit some small bags back there behind either seat. I do think these look cool. This is the grab to slide it forwards and backwards. As I said, this car has the gray central inserts and the black to again match with the exterior design and the exterior colors. There's not a huge amount of space. You feel like you're very close to the roof. And obviously the windscreen in the Hurricane has always gone right down towards the nose. You can't see any body color in front of that. You have very little idea of what's happening up front there, but that's what gives it this iconic wedge shape, this appearance that has become so famous and immediately recognizable as a Lamborghini. And this is very much at the extreme end of Lamborghini. It's a crazy thing. The Hurricane has been developing through all of the different iterations to date. And this is where it's landed. A car capable of some very, very fast lap times and simultaneously looking the part as well, being fairly easy to drive around with. And yes, I'm not the happiest with the seats and I'm not the happiest with the steering, especially after having driven the Evo rear wheel drive a couple of times. It's a little bit different to what I expected out of it, but maybe I need a little bit more time just to drive the car out and particularly experience it on track, which of course the future Schmimobile will be spending plenty of time doing that's what it's for. It's going to be driven. It's going to be used. It's going to be enjoyed and it's going to be shared as much as possible with you guys. For today though, to have this here at the Schmuseum is pretty epic. A huge thanks to Lamborghini and as always, a huge thanks to you guys for your support. It's really appreciated, but that is it for this time. Thanks for watching as always and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!